So huwa alladhi ansha'akum and wa ja'ala lakum as-sam'a wal absara wal af'idah and he installed or put in place for you hearing ability the ability to perceive and see and passionate hearts it's interesting that from hearing and seeing were not taken straight to the mind hearing seeing and thinking wa ja'ala lakum as-sam'a wal absara wal uqula he gave you hearing he gave you seeing and he gave you minds he gave you hearing, he gave you seeing, and he gave you hearts. Why? We talked about this before. The hearing and seeing should lead you to intellectual conclusions. But your intellectual conclusions should lead you to spiritual growth. Right? Your, your thoughts should lead you to emotions, to matured emotions. And Allah makes that transition here again. These cross comparisons are very beautiful in the Qur'an. Sam' absar. Af'idah. And then some, some of us will say, Al-Af'idah bima'na al-Uqool huna. La ta'ati fi al-Lugha al-Arabiya illa shadhan bima'na al-Uqool. The word Af'idah does not come in the meaning of minds, except very, very rarely in Arabic. The common usage, and waja'at fi, fi kalami sa'ir al-Arab. The, the ayat came in the language of the majority of the Arabs. It didn't come in the rare meaning. So if you open up like a Lisan al-Arab or Ibn al-Faris, one of those lexicons, and you find, وَشَاذًا كَانُوا يَقُولُونَ بِمَعْنَا أو كَانَ يَأْتِي بِمَعْنَا كَذَا وَكَذَا Sometimes it was used this way. That is not the meaning of the Qur'an. The Qur'an uses a word in its dominant, most common usage, like what everybody would have got when they heard it. And what everyone would have, would have got when they heard it, when they hear the word fu'ad, is a passionate heart, an intense heart. You know, it comes from the word fa'ad as a verb, fa'ad al-lahma, or lahmun fa'id. It actually means roasting, uh, or a piece of flesh that is, op- that, that is broiled on flame, that is roasted on a flame. And it's the image of a heart that's full of emotion and is burning up. Like if someone's passionately in love, they have a fu'ad. If they're passionately hateful to someone, they have a fu'ad. If they're com- like insanely committed to something, they have a fu'ad. If they're terribly scared of something, they have a fu'ad. If they're really grieved, they have a fu'ad. Like normal emotions and normal states of your heart is a qalb. But an intense state of your emotions is your fu'ad. And we're learning something again, something very powerful in the Qur'an. Your, your thought process, if it's mature, your sama' and absar, you listen to a message, you looked at what it was asking you to look at, you thought about it, you arrived at these conclusions. Once you have genuinely arrived at the conclusions of Islam, you will put your whole heart into it. It's not gonna be some casual affair. It's gonna be your af'idah that are gonna be involved in it, you know? You've, your, your mind is settled on us, and your heart is gonna be constantly intensified. What we're learning is, you know, if your religious affiliation is emotional only, Right? You heard some very inspiring khutbah and you got emotionally riled up and you decided you're going to start praying again. If you don't feed your mind, if you don't feed reflection, thought, and you mature in your understanding of that religion, that fever, iman fever that you experience, what's going to happen to it? It's going to wear off. It's going to die down. But if you continue to feed your mind, you continue to reflect, ponder, learn, grow in your religion intellectually, your emotional commitment, your spiritual commitment to Islam will become more and more stable. And you'll be, you'll be able to be passionate about your religion far more than if the, the, the sama and absar were not there. The aql wasn't there. The thinking piece of it was not there, you know? Our iman is, and let me give you some visuals even though I don't have a chart here. Let me give you some visuals. Iman, we all know our faith goes up and down. Our faith, it goes up and down. Some are good days, some are bad days. All of us have them, there are no exceptions. You know, and we wish most days were like the few days we have. The few good days, right? We wish all of them were like that. Now here's the thing though. There's two aspects of our faith. There's conviction, absolute, I'm convinced this is the truth. There's conviction. And then there's the emotional attachment. The emotional, and the emotional attachment comes and goes. You know you have, you, you know you have a dad. His name is this, that's my dad. You're convinced. You feel attached to your dad once in a while. It hits you once in a while. The knowledge of it is always sitting there. But it, that knowledge should lead to certain emotional conclusions. That comes and goes. Isn't that the case? And sometimes all you have to be told is, that's your dad. Now that is something you already knew. And you could turn around and say, actually, I never thought of it that way. No, <laughs> you did. That is your dad. 
But you know what? Telling you something you already know, which is called a reminder, sometimes helps not your mind, but your heart. The Qur'an is called dhikr, reminder. The Qur'an almost always tells us most of the things we already know. It tells us to worship Allah, to be grateful to Him, to be mindful of Him. This is stuff we know or don't know. We do know. But these, this information can sit somewhere in a back shelf in your mind and you're not conscious of it and you're not thinking through it and it's not driving your everyday life. When it's brought to life, when you're reminded by it, it rejuvenates. It refreshes.